of all, uh, thanks for coming to our seminar. Uh, it's about all about independence. It's about like we're going to share our experiences with people who would you like to become independent, like people who would you like to set up, like start their own business and haven't done it yet. So like we have like we already like passed through the same kind of like we experienced the same thing and we would like to share our experience with you guys. And
One thing we want to stress is that the only for the other page. So of course, you know, Hong Kong is a financial and business center of Asia and the world. Also, it's a gateway and window to China. So, you know, of all we know, you know, China is such a big market now, but uh, still, for most of the time, it's, uh, it's uh, very difficult to be directly with China. Also, Hong Kong is a kind of a bridge for East and West. And uh, we want to say the most, Hong Kong is like the most biggest in the world for companies and startups. And at the same time, it's a uh, you know, very low risk. You cannot even have the fun and many other companies. So, for example, like a simple and low taxation, and the easy business registration, and the posture, and the low cost and the low risk in initial investment and running cost. Just, just the exact full length. And uh, Hong Kong is uh, you know, the international city. So like a Hong Kong institution, the Hong Kong people, they accept foreigners and the different kind of people without discrimination. Uh, that's true because I remember that uh, a few years ago when I was doing business in Japan, and although like I'm, I'm Japanese Brazilian, but back in Japan, like sometimes I'm considered, I'm treated as as a Brazilian as a partner, and like sometimes companies would would not deal with my company just because like we had like it was foreign, like like a, a company like that was like had too many like foreigners. So they were like, oh, we are not going to do business with your company because it's a foreign company. But like here in Hong Kong, it's like more like an open like society, so it's much easier like, to do business. I don't think that kind of situation would, would happen here. I don't think people would say, oh, we're going, not going to do business with you because you are a foreigner. So like Hong Kong has this kind of advantage when compared to Japan. And another thing that, like, when comparing, like, Hong Kong, like, with, like, both Japan and Brazil, like, here, it's much easier in terms of, like, taxation. Like, you pay much, like, lower tax when, like, corporate tax here is about, like, 16, 16.5%. Like, compared to, like, Japan and Brazil, which is about, like, 40%, sometimes even, like, 50%. So here, you pay much lower tax which is an encouragement to start up companies. And uh, in Hong Kong, you can get a uh, you know, high level of resources, especially the human resources that are in the Yes, that's true. Because uh, like when you compare to countries like Japan, like, um, like we, have, we have to compare to Japan because we came yeah. from a Japanese like, background. So like when I compare to Japan, like here, I can get like an employee to work for my company for like graduate, uh, like somebody who just graduated from college, for about like ten to like eleven thousand a month. But in Japan, I I would have to spend at least maybe twenty five thousand for the same kind of human resource. So uh, I think here, like in Hong Kong, this is another advantage that we have. And in Hong Kong is you know, the very diverse society. So this uh, makes Hong Kong very unique and powerful and energetic. Yeah, that's true because like here in Hong Kong, uh, there is also a historic like background about it because Hong Kong used to be like an, uh, a British uh, colony. So you can easily find like not only like English people who are like here, but also like Europeans. And Hong Kong is a kind of hub in Asia. So there are a lot of like uh, people from like Taiwan, Singapore, Koreans, Japanese. So you have you find a lot of people from a lot of different kind of countries, different kind of cultures. So it's like in terms of um, diversity, Hong Kong is a very good place to work. And uh, me and Rob, we of course uh, foreigners in Hong Kong. So foreigners like us, you know, have more advantages than disadvantages. And uh, even though that these advantages uh, could be advantages, uh, at the same time, of course, uh, that the Hong Kong people have their own advantages, so I think local people, and, uh, and of course, that the Hong Kong people can come to this for their own advantages. Yeah, and uh, another thing, 
point is uh, the, the rapid development of technology and the swap in business environment. So, for example, the initial investment and the running cost to be quite low. For example, 10 years ago, developing a new website would cost tens of thousands of dollars. And more why it would take weeks, even months to build it. But nowadays, with the improvements in technology, there are tools that you can use to make a website for free. And uh, it only takes you a few months. And uh, in the past, if you work for a large corporation, that would be what we call a stable job. But uh, nowadays, working for companies considered to be a sign of instability, because you don't know when you will be fired. On the other hand, if you start your own business now, we think it is a sign of stability, since you are doing kind of discrete in this case. So the concept of, of the discrete has changed very since so time. So what was this case in the past is not what is this case now. Firstly, we talked about this case. So in Hong Kong, you know, if you start your own company, and even the company eventually goes bankrupt, you can still have the chance to try it again. On the other hand, for example, in Japan, you won't have a second chance because in Japan, they will take your assets and uh, even your family members' assets as well. So also, you will lose your credibility too. So in Japan, if you try to get a new job and people find out you are running their own business before, it will, it will be almost impossible for you to get a new job. Uh, so like another technical advice is because like business is all about timing. So like what works now may be not workable tomorrow. And what is going to work tomorrow probably doesn't work today yet. So when is the best time to start your own business? Like now we're going to talk uh, a little bit more about like my experience as I said before, like in my case I start by doing e-commerce and investments. So that uh, we talk about the point one. So in this case kind of you know, we can do kind of this one. Like an investment or IT. And, uh, yes, because uh, when I first started, I, I didn't want to quit yet. So what I did is like I tried like investments, I tried e-commerce, I tried auction sites, shopping sites, and I started putting like products to see if I can sell it, if I can get some profit. And I only quit my job after I got enough income that could support me, like that could sustain me for a whole month. So that, like some money that would be enough to for me to eat and have fun and then when I felt like this income, like monthly income was stable, I quit my job. Yeah. So my case is a bit different because uh, as a salespeople, but uh, I I all do that as a B2B business. So it's rather hard to to kind of test one while working for a company. So the, the startup the company has been always my second researchers, but I think the key is always the, you know, the next preparation while working for a company. And then we even talk about technical advice. So firstly, based on my experience as I said, so I think First, I want to talk about is that uh, we are creator, create new markets, and develop new customers, and they even find you uh, improve the existing things, build from scratch, so like a great value for related people, uh, customers, suppliers. And uh, be an expert, be a specialist. So just this is in my experience that uh, most of the so-called salespeople actually only follow the bosses or companies, seniors, colleagues, and rules. 
and we will be looking for us. So follow-ups of the those are missing orders. So you might have that it seems like a case is nothing of the expertise and the other salespeople. So in this kind of way you cannot develop yourself. But uh, this kind of skill is uh, only for the organization. So what do you think of it? Those are the things, yes. And uh, this kind of role could be entirely replaced by the professional customer companies or marketing people in the organization. So how to be a specialist? This is my case study. So I joined the trading company back in Japan about eight years ago. So because it was a new challenge for me, the like international business in general and the textile apparel business. So I learned the those are international business, writing, and the technical things about industry, products. So, but the only one thing I really got at the time of the, the overall skill as a sales people, because I already have worked for company before, not the sales. And then the, like, uh, on the right to express myself, my opinion. So I, what I did first is, uh, first we just uh, follow the, those companies, both senior instructions, and then they see all the police success results and they can manage after the one year and eight months. And then I the start express myself and uh, adding my own concepts.
Yes, so uh, one of the things that I always tell people who want to start their own business is find your niche. Find a market, like find your market that has a high, like a great potential and a market that hasn't been explored yet. Like don't try to embrace the whole world. Unless you have like a Facebook idea, like a one, like two billion dollar idea, but like for most of the startups, they, they don't have that, but they can still do business. Just find, like try to find your niche, your niche market. And for example, in my case, I provide IT solutions for like South American companies, like mainly Brazilian companies and like Japanese companies in Hong Kong and the rest of South China. So I found my niche market. So another thing is that like how to do that, right? Because people are saying, okay, so, you, you came from Brazil, Japan, and you found yours. How do I find mine? Like, I'm not you, I'm not from, from Brazil, Japan. How do I find my niche market? Like, I would say to those people that the best thing to do is to start with things that you like the most. For example, if you like to play baseball. So you know about the rules of baseball, you have your favorite players, you know where to go to watch baseball games. And like if you like cooking, for example, then you know like you are always like looking for new recipes and stuff. If you like to talk, you like to make new friends. So like think about the things that you like the best. And try to start with those things. And think about like among those things that you like the best, try to think of like things that are not still in the market but like things, like products and services that you can provide to the market, but don't exist yet. And like sometimes maybe it's difficult, sometimes it's, maybe it's easy. I'm going to talk now about my own experience. So, like it happened about uh, 11 years ago, I was, I was a student in Japan. And I was, I was still in high school. This happened like uh, a few years back, like was about 1996. So Yahoo started, like they opened Yahoo in Japan. Like it was a service, like an American company and they started in Japan in 1996. And uh, the Yahoo auctions came like one year later. In 1997, they started Yahoo auctions in Japan. And I thought, wow, great, great service. Maybe I can sell products here, right? But at that time, I didn't have, I actually didn't need to do anything because I was a student and at that time I got a scholarship and my scholarship provided me like with a, some kind of monthly allowance and the scholarship also paid for my tuition. So although I thought the Yahoo was great, but I decided to do nothing because I didn't have to. And everything changed after I graduated from high school. Because after I graduated from, from high school, I got accepted in a, in a very famous, like uh, at that time, very famous college in Japan. But I had a problem because after I graduated from high school, the government didn't want to pay me the, the scholarship anymore because that scholarship was only for high school. So now I had a problem. I had to pay a tuition of uh, in Japanese yen, it was 800,000 yen. So now I already converted to Hong Kong dollars, so it's easy for you guys to understand like how expensive it was. It was about 80,000 Hong Kong dollars a year. So that multiplied like, and usually in Japan you go to college for four years, right? So that was about, what, uh, 320,000, uh, 320,000 Hong Kong dollars for four years. And I didn't have money. And I didn't want to rely on parents either, so I applied for a student loan. And so now I had a problem, right? And before I didn't do anything because I didn't have a problem, now I have a problem, so what to do? And I always say this, this is a phrase that I made in, in Japanese, like, ningen wa komaru to shinkasuru. It means in English, means like, when someone faces a serious, like, serious problem, that person would probably evolve because now we have a reason to evolve. And so 
on my first day of classes, I started to ask people, because I, I wanted to know, like, whenever you have a problem, you want to know, like, about other people, right? If other people have the same problem as yours, you want to know what they're doing to, to sort out the problem. So I did the same thing. I, I was worried, oh, oh my god, I have to pay $8,000. I, I don't have that money, what to do, right? And that scholarship was good because that scholarship was like zero interest for like five years. So it was zero interest, so I, like, I, 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 like my problem was serious, but it was not that serious because it was zero interest. So uh, this, like, this student loan that I got was really, was really a good student loan. And so I started asking people, so some of my classmates, I asked them, like, excuse me, uh, nice to meet you, it was the first day of class. Nice to meet you, I'm Robson. Uh, can I ask, why, do you work part-time? And if you were like, some of them were like, yes. And then I was like, so what do you do for a living? And then some of them were like, oh, we work for McDonald's, uh, Yoshinoya, KFC. And I asked them how much they were making per hour. And it was about 80 Hong Kong dollars an hour. And I also asked some other people, and like some other guys, they, they knew a little bit of like English, and in Japan, if you want to teach English, actually you don't need to have a very high English skill, like, because it's mainly like to, to check like people's like grammar and stuff. So I asked some other guys, and they were saying, oh, we are teaching, we are teaching English. And then I was like, can you tell me how much you make in an hour? And they were like, oh, $300 an hour. And I was like, wow. So I immediately thought of, okay, so then, then I, I think I will teach English, right? Because I don't want to make like $80 an hour. I want to make $300 an hour. But then again, like I thought, even if I make like $300 Hong Kong dollars an hour, it's going to take me some time to pay back the tuition, right? So my dad always used to say to me, like even now, like he says to me all the time, every time I go back to Brazil, my dad is like, don't follow the crowd. Because if you follow the crowd, you are going to become like the crowd. So if I follow those guys who work for a fast food restaurant, I would become like those guys. On the other hand, if I follow those other guys who are making a little bit more money, I would also become like those guys. So. When I remember that my dad said this to me, that don't follow the crowd, I also remember that, wow, by the way, a few years ago I found a site called Yahoo Auctions. Maybe I should try that site. And do you remember what I said a few minutes ago? I said, you must find your niche, right? And the best way to find your niche would be to start with things that you like the most. So I started to think about what I like the most. At that time, my passion was TV. I used to watch TV shows every day. And like people change, right? Because if you compare me and to myself like 10 years ago, I used to like TV so much, but now nowadays I don't watch TV anymore. I even sold my TV set. Like I don't have a TV set at home. And my other hobby was to study foreign languages because I, I like it to meet like with foreigners. Like when I was in Tokyo, I like it to meet a lot of foreigners. And I like it to study like foreign languages, like especially Chinese and French. And even when I was in school, I took some like Chinese, Cantonese and like French lessons. And I thought about it, okay, so I have two passions, right? Why not combining those two passions together? So at a certain point, I started to watch uh, foreign TV to practice a foreign language. So I started to watch like Chinese TV so that I could practice my Chinese. And I thought about like, maybe, right? Maybe there are other people who also share the same hobby with me, right? And. I noticed that satellite TV at that time was really popular in Japan, and which is very different from Hong Kong. Like Hong Kong, like satellite TV is not popular. I think one of the main reasons is because people don't usually have a balcony. Like here in Hong Kong, most of the apartments they don't have balconies, 
so people cannot install like, satellite TVs, right? And another reason is because like Now TV and iCable, they they're kind of monopoly of, of the market, so like they kind of control it. So and, and they're not very expensive when you compare to other countries. So like I don't think there is an easy in Japan. Satellite TV was very popular. So what I did was that I went. I used to come a lot to Hong Kong, and I used to go like when I was in Japan. I used to come a lot to like Hong Kong, Macau, Shenzhen uh, for sightseeing, and I found this kind of box in in Shenzhen, and I thought maybe like the same box, satellite box, can be used in Japan. And the first thing to do when you start your own business, right? Maybe I can get a signal. Like, I thought about the technology, but the first thing to do is not really the technology. Like, first thing you have a very good idea, you have to check if it's legal to do it. So, before even, like, trying to get a signal in Japan, I checked with a lawyer, and I consulted the telecommunications, like, department in, in Japan as well. And I asked them, is it legal to get signals from other satellites? Because jet, like satellite TV was popular in Japan, but they, they only targeted uh, Japanese satellites. So I went to the department and also consulted a lawyer, and they, they both said it's okay. It's okay to do it. Like, it's legal. So the second thing to do is to see if it's technological possible to get a signal. So what I did was I bought a small dish like 60 centimeters dish and I took it back to Japan and I tried it and it worked and I was getting like a few channels and let's go to yes and there was an interesting thing because the box in China in Shenzhen was being sold by like for it was being sold for like 300 because they had like different models, they have some models with a lot of features, and they have like very, very basic models. So the cheapest one was like three hundred Hong Kong dollars, and the most expensive one was about uh, one thousand Hong Kong dollars. But in Japan, a similar model, like the cheapest and, and the, the closest model to the one in China, the cheapest one was being sold for seven thousand Hong Kong dollars. So I thought maybe there is an opportunity, there is a business opportunity here. So what I did was, uh, let's go to the next slide. I checked if there were any other companies also targeting like Chinese or Taiwanese or like Korean satellites. And I found out there were, there were companies targeting. But those companies, they used to sell this huge antenna, it was like at least four meters, like four meters of size of antennas. And they were only targeting institutions and companies. So, I had an idea, maybe I can sell like a small box with a small dish, only like 60 centimeters, to individuals. Like people who also like Chinese TV like me. And but that was a challenge because like those companies that were targeting like institutions or other companies, their niche was like four meters, but they could get like 100 channels. My niche was small, like anybody could easily install it at their like apartment or house. But I could only get I could only get like four to five channels. But but I thought okay, but the purpose not to get a lot of channels, right? The main purpose of those people would be to enjoy and practice listening to a foreign language while watching TV. So maybe for those people, like four to five channels is enough, right? They don't need many channels. But, but, but I was not sure, like I was just guessing. So let's test, let's test the market. So once you have a very nice idea, don't place an order of a container, right? First is expensive, second is risky. So just buy a few, like a few units, and try to test the market to see if you can sell. So I bought a few ones and tried to sell. And let's go to the next slide. 
And on the, the thing that I just mentioned before, that the competitors, like I needed to check what competitors were doing. And they were only selling to companies and institutions and like huge dishes. And the method that we, they were using, like they had a physical store. I didn't have money to open my physical store. And another thing that they were, like, they had their own websites. But at that time, I didn't have money to, to make my own website. And, and making your own website at that time, like nowadays it's really easy. But at that time, like 10 years ago, it was not as easy as it is now. So my idea was, I was helping individuals. I will not target big companies or like institutions. I'm going to sell to individuals. I'm not going to sell a four meter dish because I'm not that big, I cannot carry it. And I, I, I can only carry like small things, right? And it's much easier. And I'm not going to sell in a physical store. I'm going to sell on Yahoo Auctions. And what happened is that I needed to set the price, right? And I set my price at 2,980 Hong Kong dollars. And setting the price is very important. Like whenever you start your own business and you have a service or you have a product that you want to sell, you need, you need to set the price. And you need to set a very good price. Like you can't set it too low because then you get no money, you don't get profit. You can't set it too high either because if you set it too high, nobody's going to buy it. Yeah, it doesn't matter if it's too it's like it's really good. Well, unless unless it's a, an iPhone or something like that, like if it, it's a revolutionary like idea product, it's another story. But for most of the cases, like if you set it too high, people are not going to buy it. So just try to set the perfect price. How did I? And then people were like, "How did you come to the conclusion that you needed to set two thousand? 980 Hong Kong dollars is because I checked with existing like other companies that were targeting like Japanese athletes. They were selling for about that price, so I sell it a little bit lower than the price they were selling, so that I could compete with them. And my cost was I needed to pay for the setup box, right? So that was like 300 Hong Kong dollars, and I needed to pay the shipping from Shenzhen to Tokyo. That was about 100 Hong Kong dollars. I also needed to pay a fee to Yahoo Auctions Japan because they were charging about 5% of handling charges. And this was paid by, to, to Yahoo Auction. So my total cost was about 549 Hong Kong dollars. And so if you subtract that from the price I paid on the box, on the set. My profit for one box, well, for one set, was 2,431 Hong Kong dollars. And I started selling, and I came to the conclusion that I started to notice that people were buying, people were interested. And people were even emailing me, saying, oh, please, do you have any other models and stuff? And on the first month, I was not selling much. I was only selling like one or two, like the average was like two units per day. So after one month, I sold on Yahoo Auctions, I sold 60 sets, like 60 units. And my profit was about 145,000 Hong Kong dollars in a month. And I was really happy because like a few slides back, I, I had this problem. I had to pay the tuition of 80,000 Hong Kong dollars. And I was thinking, oh, how many months or how many years can I pay it back? It turned out that at, just after one month, I paid it back. And I still had some change to, to go for dinner with my friends, right? And to spend and to enjoy. And I was happy at that time. But what I said a few slides ago is all about timing. When you do your business, you know that everything is about the right time. Like if you do the wrong time, it doesn't like it doesn't work. Everything is like, or you do it on the right time, or you don't do it. Nowadays is a different time. So nowadays, if I try to do the same idea, it's not going to work. Why? 
Because nowadays, there are a lot of other Chinese services like Eastring, Tudo, Yufu. They can just, like, the, all those services compete and all those services provide access to free of charge Chinese TV programming. So, my idea probably if I implement it like today, it wouldn't be so profitable as it was 10 years ago. And when you start your own business, right? Like as Koji mentioned a few slides ago, and before it was so difficult to build a website because you needed to be an IT person, you needed to be like an IT software programmer or you needed to come from a kind of engineering kind of background. But these days it's so easy, like there are sites like WordPress, Jimdo or Joomla all, or Drupal, all those sites, like if you use those tools, you can easily make a website. So anybody can make a website now. So what's the difference? So once you make your website, how are you going to let people know about your website? How are you going to, 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 to make the visibility of your site like go higher, like increase the visibility of your website. And why do I talk about social media? Is because social media is really important. Because by like not spending much money, you can spread the word of your website and make it popular among your friends. And if you think about it, right, nowadays more people are using social media more people are using social media than search engines. And that's true because if you count on the number, take a look at the number of accesses, like the number of hits on Facebook. It's already like greater than the number of hits that on search engines like Google. So, okay, so I'm not going to target uh, search engines anymore. No, 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 you should, like, you shouldn't, you shouldn't stop. Like, you target, search engines, right? You continue targeting search engines, and on the top of that, you also target social media. Like, do both. Like, increase your visibility on Google, increase, it, uh, like, increase your visibility on Baidu, if you're targeting China market, right? And at the same time, try to increase your visibility on Facebook, or like, increase your visibility on Weibo, if you're targeting online China. And Let's go to the next slide. So, a lot of people talk about earn money. Oh, I need to earn money, earn money, earn money, right? I say, like, with the, like, with the increase of popularity of social media, that's more or less equal to earn people. Because I always emphasize this, like, earn money also means earn people, earn friends, like, gain new friends. Gain new fans on Facebook, or gain new followers on Twitter, if you have a Twitter account. So gain more followers on Twitter. And by gaining more fans on Facebook, or by gaining new followers on Twitter, you are increasing the visibility of your service or your product. So companies, a lot of companies are starting to promote their products and services on Facebook. And why do they do that? It's because they, companies are not, they're not dumb, like they're smart too. So companies also realize that there is a lot of traffic going to sites like Facebook, Twitter, and things like that. So a lot of companies started to invest in social media marketing. So let's take a look at the next slide, yes. This is about I'm going, also going to briefly explain about SEO. SEO means search engine optimization. I know that probably a lot of people here don't know what it means. So basically, it means how to market your product on, or service on the ranking of the results that come out, like come up on like search engines like Google. And for example, when you search for, for shoes, right? And then you search for shoes on, on Google, right? And then most of the users, like the general, the average user will only take a look at the first page. Only a few users will click on next to 
go and see the results on the next page. And this is true. So companies, they, of course, they want their products to be listed uh, on the top of the ranking um, on those search engines. And this is a very good example. Like back a few, like in 2000, this happened in the year 2000. And I was working for the first SEO company in Japan. They were called uh, ePromote, and they don't exist anymore. Like they, they went like for a few years ago. But at that time, they were the first, and they were really very popular because they were the only SEO company. And at that time, there was a company like one of the most popular uh, cell phone companies in Japan. They were called JPhone. But JPhone later was bought by Vodafone, and Vodafone was later bought by SoftBank, so now it became SoftBank. But at that time, at that time it was JPhone, so JPhone approached me, and I was working for, for this company, so JPhone approached my boss, and they were like, oh, we have a problem, like, we want to ask you your, for your service. Our problem is that when people search for, this is a, K type one. It means mobile phone. So when people search for a cell phone, they can't find our J phone website. We want our J phone website to be ranked on the top, on the first, on the list of results. Can you help us? So my boss taught me a lot of uh, techniques that I could use to make the website be ranked higher. And one of those techniques was this. So what I did was, I opened the JPhone website, and I opened the background, right? And I just typed cell phone, cell phone, cell phone, cell phone, like thousands of times on the background. And the background was white. And then I also set the font color to white, so it becomes invisible to, to, to people. Like, people cannot see it. But for the search engine, it was, a big difference because for the search engine at that time, search engine would look oh so many words related to cell phones. So probably this site is really related to this keyword. And another thing that I do was I created a lot of small blocks, and I call those small blocks mini sites. And from each of those small blocks, I put a link to the JPhone website. So when Google took a look at it, so Google saw oh, so many small websites linking to the JPhone website, right? So the JPhone website must be really related to this keyword, cell phone. And it happened that one month later, the JPhone was like, initially the JPhone was positioned on the third, I think third or fourth page was rank, ranked at like number 79 on the ranking. And after one month, it became number one, just by doing this. So I, I was happy, j -Phone guys were happy, my boss was happy. And, but this, I wrote here, is the past. This was 11 years ago. So search engines were, were kind of done, and the technology was not advanced as it is right now. So that time it worked. So what if you do this right now, it's not going to work. If you just put like cell phone a lot of times and change the fonts to white, background to white, probably the search engine will put you in some kind of blacklist because the search engine will know that you are doing that on purpose. So that technique doesn't work anymore. And, uh, and we're getting a technical error too, I don't know. So, uh, so what? What does yeah? What, what are other things that like, now the search engines don't react like that? What can you do to advertise your product or service? So what you can do is instead of just talking about uh, search, uh, instead of just. Instead of just talking about like search engine optimization, there is a new word that's very popular nowadays. It's social network optimization. How to optimize your website to become more visible 
on so social networks. And another thing that Koji would like to explain about. Yeah, in Japan, nowadays, some advanced people talking about the new terms that it's called the, the, the Chinese word. In Japan, it's called UKSU. UK in Chinese, they communicate the UK. So I think this is kind of similar to the PR thing. So one good example is uh, my friend back in Japan is the president of the National Manufacturer. So usually, you know, those company brochures are in Informa and serious. But his line that he made uh, his company brochure in the form of uh, like the imitation of those uh, the magazines, I mean the fashion magazines for girls in Japan. But the state content are very serious and uh, explaining, explaining about uh, his company and products and the people, very family. So it immediately attracted the people's attention, especially media people. And those media people are always looking for those interesting and uh, information and story. So many media like uh, TV, newspaper, take this. Also many videos, you know, people talking about this on Facebook and so on. So now it's machine companies that are the famous and they get many interviews. Yeah, so what I mentioned just before, so we are targeting now because like we are not only doing SEO, we are also doing like SNO, like social networking optimization. So we target uh, we target sites like Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and like YouTube I put like Google Plus here because they are kind of together, like same company, LinkedIn, Quora, and Pinterest. And I'm going to give you a very good example on Quora. And, but that's going to be a, like a couple of slides later. Uh, I always say that like now companies are looking for a relationship. They are not just targeting views. And before when you talk about SEO, you only tar target like views. Doesn't matter where they come from, but you want to increase the number of views, the number of accesses on your website. But these days, People try to increase not the views, but like they try to, try to increase the number of followers, number of fans. So try to earn people instead of just views. Because when you earn people, especially now that you have Facebook and Twitter, when you earn people, those people keep coming back to your fan page or keep coming back to your Twitter page whenever you have an update. And people keep coming back to you. So that's the advantage of dealing with social networks. And as I said just before, like Quora. Quora is a website that is a kind of Yahoo Answers. So it's like a question and answer kind of website. So if you have a question, you ask, and people answer your question. But Quora also has some like social networking features like Facebook so you can become friends with other members and exchange like messages and updates with other members. So it's a kind of Yahoo Answers plus Facebook. Now this for our website, I, what I, I noticed that this is a very good example of how you can promote your company on sites like Quora. For example, there was someone asked this question, what are some good tech startups in Hong Kong? And then a lot of people were answering. And one of the answers was a guy that mentioned about, let's see, there's a guy that mentioned about our company's website. So this guy replied and said, oh, I recommend one of these startup companies that I like. And he pointed to Magari.com, which is one of my uh, company's websites. And because of this, we, I could increase my traffic to my website. So this is one of the techniques that you can easily apply right now without spending any pain. It's free of charge. And you can generate a lot of traffic to your website. There's another very good example that it happened to a startup. It was uh, PayPal. At that time, PayPal was a small company, and they were not part of eBay or another company. And, and PayPal needed to increase the number of members, but nobody knew PayPal. 
Like even if you go to eBay, like PayPal was not one of the payment options. So how how did PayPal become famous? How did PayPal become popular? They have this very interesting like marketing strategy that I also recommend to a lot of people. And this was shared by one of my friends who used, actually he used to work for, for PayPal when he was first established. PayPal started buying a huge amount of products on eBay. So they start buying, 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 buying a lot of products on eBay. And you know that eBay, like there are lots of different sellers selling products on eBay. So they demanded, they kind of asked, asked each of those sellers that they wanted to pay using PayPal. So this caused, this caused a, a, a snowball, kind of snowball effect. Because those first those sellers that they approached, those sellers that they bought products, they started accepting PayPal because it was demanded by the buyer, right? And then what happened is that other sellers also started to accept PayPal because other sellers saw, saw that these sellers were accepting PayPal. So it's a kind of competition, like, oh, they accept PayPal, so I'm going to accept PayPal too, right? And by doing that, they increased the PayPal acceptance on eBay. And let's go. Another thing that is very easy and is something that you can start doing right now to increase the visibility of your product or service is by using YouTube. And this I call the YouTube effect. Because people say in English, right, they say one picture is worth a thousand words, right? I say that one video is worth a thousand of pictures. So when you shoot, shoot a video, right, the like actually the popularity of that video will be much higher like the number of views of that video will be much higher than just a picture and another thing that i would like to talk about is because like youtube right youtube now is part of google like google bought youtube a few years ago so now youtube became part of google so this is directly connected to the seo techniques i mentioned why because when you put a video, when you put a video of your product or service on YouTube, and on the next few days you search on Google for that product, actually one of the first uh, results that will come out on Google will be from YouTube, and probably it's because like they are from the same company. So this is very good. Like if you have a product or service. Like you must take action, you must put it, uh, like you must take a video and you must put it in YouTube because it's really worth Like I, I tried it myself and it helped me. And the good thing is that you don't have to pay a penny. Like, of, of course you, you spend money buying the, the video camera and stuff, but you don't pay a penny on advertising. And it's really good. Uh, so yeah. So thank you for your time, and uh, I'd like to uh, have some time to, for uh, questions and answers. And if you have, uh, would, would you like to add anything? Would you like to say? If you have any questions to us. Yes. So what exactly does your company do now? Like what kind of services do you do? Yes. So uh, the example I did was back when I was in college. And after that, I started to develop my own e-commerce uh, solution, like web development. And now I'm not only doing my own website, but I'm, all, I'm doing websites for customers. And they are mainly uh, Japanese or Brazilian companies who are established here in Macau and Shenzhen, like south of China. Sometimes I also deal with Brazilian companies in Brazil or Japanese companies in Japan. But most of the time, most of the time, most of my customers are based here. So, a follow-up question: Do you um, have marketing tools? Like you 
put up videos on YouTube for your company service and what's your yes yes so I make use of a lot of uh, uh, the social uh, network um, social networking sites that I mentioned. Quora, YouTube, Pinterest, especially Pinterest because Pinterest like is increasing the popularity of uh, Pinterest has the highest uh, growth rate during 2012. So we focus a lot on at, like uh, marketing on Pinterest. And, but the most important one is, is still like the, the, the ones that I mentioned before, like Google, Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. So uh, for our products and services, we still focus on those uh, ones. Yes. Yeah. with the post office or the delivery service 
And the delivery service, like something like the SF Express here, like the Shunfeng SF, SF Express, they have something in Japan called uh, Yamato, like Kuroniko Yamato. And that service will actually go to the customer's house and get the payment in cash. And the payment in cash will be delivered to your bank account. So it's a very different uh, like culture out there. So that's why I didn't mention. But it, it was very easy to set up. And uh, I didn't experience any problem. Uh, and the other thing about like how to brand your product, like your own image, I think, I think like it's both ways because your personal image, like if, as you become like a public person, like your personal image is important. But of course, your company's image is also very important. So in my case, I try to target both. Like I try to build my personal image at the same time. I try to promote my company's image as well. I think, especially nowadays, that like. Social networking is so popular, so it's very important to like how you market yourself. And what do you think? I just uh, started my company this year, so actually there are many, you know, Facebook, uh, even the, uh, just the Japanese people who started their uh, business. In, you know, well, uh, and uh, most of those people have their own jobs already, and uh, which have many followers. And then, but uh, I found out, uh, you know, most of those people, I would say 100%, just uh, in a writing about uh, the political, political, and I don't mean it's very seriously. So actually, I didn't want to read it. So what I did too is uh, just my character. I just uh, write about the very things, just a very funny. Uh, maybe just uh, one in 50 rows, just uh, I write up my product business. And this way, I actually very quickly, like uh, just in three months, I got to the main followers, viewers. So for example, now you you uh, yeah. the search by Google, and the type of uh, like the British game, Hong Kong, and the Japanese, and, and the Google Japan. So, and uh, just uh, number two or three already. So, for me, more for uh, like a passive personal brand. Because, uh, you know, I'm a startup, just a small company, so I'm doing more. All right. Any more questions? Yes. Okay. Um, as far as I know, Pinterest is a product-oriented or a picture-oriented oriented, uh, social media. So, but your company provides website IT services. So, how do you relate? I mean, how do you promote promote it on Pinterest? Oh yes. So uh, yes. Very, very interesting question. Like uh, when I mentioned about Pinterest, I was because like we promote we promote IT services, but we also promote the SEO and SNO services. So when I mentioned about Pinterest, I was actually mentioning about my clients because my clients they actually have uh, products that they like to sell. So one of the services that I provide to those clients is like the service of promoting their products on Pinterest. It's not my, yeah, not my service. <laughs> yeah. Thank you very much. Any more questions? No? All right. So thank you for your time today. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh,